Hey everyone, I have finally gotten my hands on a 7900 XTX and I am really excited to test it out for you guys. But for today's video, I thought it would be fun to compare our results with AMD's last generation flagship, the 6900 XT. To just quickly go over our test system specs, we are using the Red Devil build with a 5800X 3D, 4 by 8 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz CL15 RAM, all packed inside of a Lian Li O11 Dynamic Evo to support good airflow. And with all that being said guys, let's get right into the benchmarks. Starting out with a quick one here, I decided to go with God of War at 4K maximum settings just to get a feeling for the rasterized performance difference between these two cards. Now both cards handle this game very easily, but the 7900 XT takes a pretty commanding lead looking to average about 20 more FPS than the 6900 XT. Moving on to another Sony port, I felt Spider-Man Remastered would offer a good mix of rasterize and light ray tracing comparisons. Starting out at 4K with ray tracing enabled, the 6900 XT doesn't feel too hot here, averaging around 48 FPS and never really cresting anywhere close to the 60 FPS average. The 7900 XT, on the other hand, appears to be averaging around 65 FPS, showing a huge performance increase over the 6900 XT, proving to some extent that AMD has made some improvements in ray trace performance over the previous generation. Turning off the ray tracing, both cards do extremely well, with the 7900 XTX averaging over 100 FPS. It is still beating out the 6900 XT, which averaged more around the 80s for FPS. Going down to 1440p resolution with very high settings and ray tracing enabled once again, the 6900 XT actually gives a very playable experience, staying around the 70 FPS mark. The 7900 XTX actually doesn't look much better here, averaging maybe 10 more FPS than the 6900 XT, really not as big of an increase in performance that we were seeing in some of the other benchmarks. Turning ray tracing off at 1440p, the 7900 XTX starts to average a pretty staggeringly high FPS, getting over 150 on occasion. Although I started to experience some strange pop in on buildings and sometimes the game would even freeze up to load in the assets. It kind of makes me wonder if the engine isn't built for this high of FPS as the other benchmarks I was running previously had no problems like this. Um, looking over at the 6900 XTX on the other hand, it doesn't have that same pop in experience at all, but it does average a little less FPS, getting around the 120s. Changing gears a little bit to a game we haven't tested in a really long time, I wanted to see how Tiny Tina's Wonderlands fared, as it is a pretty heavily optimized game for AMD GPUs in particular. So starting out with 4K at the badass quality settings, the 7900 XTX averages a pretty healthy 80 FPS, beating out the 6900 XT, which averaged closer to 70 FPS. Once again, it's a benchmark where we aren't seeing a huge gain over the last gen GPU. Going down to 1440p at the badass quality once again, the 6900 XT gets pretty close to averaging around 140 FPS which is really great if you're trying to play it at 144Hz. Looking over at the 7900 XTX, we once again are really similar in terms of performance, averaging around the 144 FPS mark, although arguably it stays consistently a bit higher than the 6900 XT, the margin of difference between these two cards here in this benchmark is really small. And finally, it's time to take a look at a brand new benchmark that I've had requested quite a bit on this channel. I have finally added Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 to our testing suite, and we are going to start out at 4K with the settings maxed out. Looking at the 7900 XTX first, we average a pretty insane 117 FPS, with the lowest dip of the explosion only going down to about 60 FPS. 
Comparing that to the 6900 XT, it averaged a respectable 82 FPS with the lowest of the explosion part of the benchmark dropping down to 41 FPS, but overall it's kind of getting slaughtered by the 7900 XTX. Bumping down to 1440p, the 7900 XTX puts up a super impressive 193 FPS average, dropping down to 107 FPS at its lowest. Looking at the 6900 XT, it averaged 134 FPS, dipping down to 74 FPS during the explosion, and it's really widening the gap even more between these two cards. The 7900 XTX here seems to run excellently in this title. But I suppose it's time to put these two cards in their place. We are switching over to Cyberpunk 2077 and trying to run the game at 4K with medium ray tracing enabled, where both cards here struggle to put anything playable together. The 7900 XTX looks okay, averaging 28 FPS, which is pretty close to 30. The 6900 XT averaged a really pathetic 19 FPS, but you know, in reality, I was kind of hoping for a bigger improvement from the 7900 XTX, but we just didn't see it here. Taking away the ray tracing and just running the game at 4K Ultra, the 7900 XTX averages a good 68 FPS, which is just about perfect for a 4K television. The 6900 XT struggles and averages 45 FPS, so it's a pretty big win in raw rasterized performance for the 7900 XTX. Going down to 1440p and once again trying out medium ray tracing, the 6900 XT gives a somewhat playable 40 FPS for people that are okay with a 30 FPS average, where the 7900 XT does a little bit better here, averaging 55 FPS, but it unfortunately isn't quite able to get into the 60 FPS range. Turning off ray tracing at ultra quality 1440p, the 7900 XTX averages 130 FPS, while the 6900 XT averages 98. So it's another pretty big win from the 7900 XTX when we're talking about non ray trace performance. Switching to something a little bit lighter, I decided to throw in a racing game into the mix, my personal favorite being Dirt Rally 2, and I know it's not as heavy as Forza, but it's been the game I've been playing a lot lately, so looking at the 4K max settings performance from the 7900 XTX, we are averaging just about 170 FPS, which is totally overkill for a racing game. And looking at the 6900 XT, it does a little bit worse, getting 130 FPS, so still a decent win for the 7900 XTX for, you know, whatever that's worth. Next, we have a pretty classic benchmark of Red Dead Redemption 2. Starting out with 4K max settings, we get a pretty crazy 96 average FPS from the 7900 XTX, while the 6900 XTX loses pretty handedly, averaging 74 FPS. Bumping down to 1440p, the 7900 XTX gives a very high FPS experience, averaging 136 FPS, where the 6900 XT also does very well, averaging 109 FPS, but still staying quite a bit far behind the 7900 XTX here. So the last game on today's list ended up being kind of a throwaway, but for all you Elden Ring players out there, both these cards can easily run and average 60 FPS at 4K with the settings maxed out. So don't go upgrading your GPU for this game if you don't have to. For my closing thoughts here, clearly the 7900 XTX is the far superior card, but how necessary is the upgrade? It is pretty interesting seeing the results in every game because at 4K, both cards average over 60 FPS in almost every title when comparing the straight rasterized performance. But if you like ray tracing, although the 7900 XTX wins, depending on the title, it still doesn't feel like enough of an improvement. I think the reality is, it honestly depends on the titles you're playing. Modern Warfare 2 shows the 7900 XTX might be worth the money if you want to be using a 
4K 144 hertz monitor while playing it. Spider-Man showed that we can run the game at max ray tracing now without the need of FSR, which is what I typically had to do with the 6900 XT if I wanted a playable ray trace experience at 4K. Cyberpunk allows you to play the game at 4K Ultra where the 6900 XT couldn't handle it, but ray tracing still proves to be a bit too much for both cards. For all the other titles, I can't say the extra FPS would really be worth the cost, but that is just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I had a lot of fun testing both of these cards out today, so if you enjoyed the video as much as I liked making it, consider giving it a like. And if you've been browsing my content for a little while and enjoy what I do, it'd be really nice if you'd think about subscribing to the channel. We just crested past 100, so next milestone 200 maybe 500 who knows once again everyone i just want to thank you for watching and i hope you all have a great day